Hello, what is up my friends? Welcome back to another website live stream. My name is David Martin and today I'm very excited because we're going to be continuing our live stream from last week. Uh, if you guys weren't around last week, well, let me tell you a little bit about what we did. We went ahead and actually uh, worked on a UX wireframe based on the book uh, called Building a Story Brand. So here it is right there. <laughs> but uh, this book, if you haven't read it, you haven't heard about it, you don't know what it is, it's by Donald Miller. And essentially, it provides you with a marketing framework that you could use to clarify your message and simplify what it is that you are trying to say on your websites. Uh, this is really, really great for people who might be struggling with kind of getting their message out there, getting their website to convert. Um, it's not the end all be all. Your website does not have to follow uh, this framework, but it's a really helpful starting point. So I really wanted to start the new year off with a kind of website redesign. Um, and I decided what better way to do it than my own website. So without further ado, let's dive right into my screen and let's take a look at what we worked on last week. So well, let's go to the other side. There we go. So here we have um, the actual wireframe that we worked on. Let's go ahead and just uh, preview this and talk through kind of what everything is, right? So we've got a very straightforward navigation up top. We've just got a logo and two links. That's it. Nothing else. The first is a transitional CTA. So this is like a secondary action that you might want people to take on your website. Uh, for our intents and purposes, this is going to be um, our freebie, our lead magnet, whatever offer it is that's not a hard sell trying to get them onto a call. Uh, whatever resource it is that we're trying to give away, that is going to be uh, that transitional call to action. Next is the direct call to action. So this is the action that we actually want them to take. And this one is repeated all throughout the page. You're going to see this black button all throughout, including right here in the hero, right? So we have our brand one liner, uh, short description, descriptive text about what we're trying to sell. And then again, repeating our direct call to action with a couple of different successes. Oop, looks like I got some weird temperature change going here with my lights. One second. Blackness. Okay. Um, success one, two, and three. So these are desired outcomes that we want users or uh, potential customers to understand that we're going to be able to help them with, right? Next, we've got this other section, which is uh, what people might be struggling with. So these are different problems uh, that we are going to step in and try to solve as the guide in their journey. Next is the value proposition with the services that we offer. Uh, this is the kind of social proof section that proves that we are a guide. Next, we've got packages and pricing, and this is pretty much using the whole small, medium, large that you would see at like a McDonald's or a Starbucks. Uh, so same kind of format, simple, how it works section, one, two, three, nothing complicated or out of this world, a short explanatory paragraph where we get to go a little bit deeper into who we are, um, and why we're in a unique position to help them. And then finally, our transitional call to action all the way at the bottom, in case they haven't converted yet on any direct call to action, make sure that we present it, the transitional CTA one more time to try to get them into our funnel. And then finally, what, um, Story brand calls the junk drawer, what we would call a footer, just really, really basic. So this wireframe you should have access to. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure uh, that in the chat you are able to grab it. Oops. So I'm going to go ahead and just upload the starter file for you guys in the chat so that you guys can follow along with me in case you guys want to design a little bit here in Adobe XD. So let me grab that for you. Just one second, my friends. And this is the story brand UX wireframe starter file. Very cool. All right. Now that that has been dropped in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open the one that we were working on last week that has a little bit more uh, of my copy already in there so that we're not just starting 
from the beginning, we can actually start from where our brand copy should be. So it's going to be pretty much, let me close this out. It's going to be pretty much the exact same as the other one. The only difference is that we actually went in and added in some text here in terms of what the call to actions are going to be, uh, what the benefits are, what the packages are, you know, testimonials, all that good stuff. We actually went in and added all of that information in ahead of time during our last live stream. Again, if you want to see how we did that, feel free to go check it out on my channel. But today we're going to be working just on the UI design. So we're actually going to try to build out a really simple kind of website style guide to kind of guide our design. But honestly, my website as it stands right now, I think that there's a lot of room for improvements. But more importantly, I think that we can do a lot just to push the design of this thing to make it look and feel a little bit nicer. Now, this is not anything fancy. Right now, it's a one page website. It's been working for me so far, but it's still not converting as well as I'd like it to. Um, so that's why we're going to be redesigning it. Now, we do have a few things, a few brand assets that we're going to be using to kind of guide the design. Specifically, we have a logo uh, and we have a few colors, but other than that, we're pretty open. Uh, I'm pretty open to exploring different font options, different color palettes, stuff like that. Um, so we're going to kind of push the design a little bit further than what we have here because I really want people who come onto this website to understand, wow, this is not a random template that he just put onto his website. This is something that he custom designed, custom coded, uh, just like we're going to do for them and just like we do for our clients every day. We got Omari in the chat. Welcome, my friend. It's good to have you. Good to see you. Hope you are well. Thank you for coming. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you what brand assets I have. It's a little embarrassing because I run my own web design agency. You know, we offer brand packages to clients, but we haven't gone and done any of this stuff ourselves. Uh, so this is going to be probably something that we do in future live streams. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, do me a favor and subscribe because we're going to be creating uh, brand guidelines and website style guides and all that good stuff for the UXX brand so that you can see how we would do it for ourselves and for our clients. And hopefully I'll be also putting all of that together as templates that you guys could actually use uh, when it comes time to actually design your website or your client's website. So again, a little embarrassing, but this is all we have, right guys? Like we didn't, we haven't spent too long working on the brand. So we just have here a couple of uh, mock-ups on how to use the brand and a couple of different colors uh, just to kind of inspire us to get started. So I'm just going to kind of copy this stuff into Adobe XD just because I don't want to have Illustrator open. Uh, you can if you want to. I'm running an entire live stream and trying to do this heavy design work. So I got to be a little bit, careful about what it is that I'm adding in here. And unfortunately, it looks like what I copied did not come over. So I'm going to try to do that one more time. Hang in there with me. But yeah. And hopefully you guys can relate because even if you do sell websites, I know that a lot of us will do stuff for our clients and we won't really do it for ourselves. So that's really what these live streams are all about. It's sitting down and actually applying the things that you know work for your clients and doing it for your own business, right? If we're not doing it for your own business, then your clients are going to have a lot of concerns when it comes time to look at your proposal, right? It's the whole idea of you don't really want to trust a, a, a skinny chef. You know what I mean? You want to make sure that whatever, <laughs> whoever is cooking your food, that person eats. You know what I'm saying? You don't want a, a skinny chef designing your website and you don't want a person with a one page landing page, no brand guidelines designing your website. That's just a reality. So we need to take some time to actually apply these things to our website. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to really quickly just build out uh, the library of styles. So right here, I'm going to click on libraries. Uh, oh, actually, is this here? Yes, it is. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start adding some of these colors into the library. So first I'm going to add it here into just my color picker, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to add it as a color. Looks like we're having some problems here. Let's 
with the connection that's not letting me add the library. It's unfortunate. Let me try just saving this as a cloud document. And maybe that will fix it for me. Okay, there we go. I had to go into document assets. So now that I've clicked document assets, I can go ahead and start setting my colors. So I'm going to select this yellow and I'm going to go ahead and click plus here on the left hand side. That's going to add that color yellow. I'm going to do the same for this dark blue. Just add that in here on the side and in my color picker. This is going to save me a ton of time in just a little bit once we get to designing. So this is always where I like to start. Go ahead again, add in all these colors. There we go. All right. And now that that's done, we can go ahead and start to figure out what typography we're going to use. Now, I take, I use, I think on my website, Poppins. I'm going to right click inspect on my own website. And I just want to kind of see what the font is. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but right there it says the font is in fact Poppins. If I come here into the site, I can click the computer tab go down to font family and here I can actually see that it is in fact set to Poppins. So that's the one that we're going to start with in our design, uh, but it might not be the one that we end with, right? We're going to explore a little bit here. So I'm going to duplicate this wireframe that we were working with last week, and I'm going to start working kind of here within this wireframe. And I'm going to experiment a little bit, starting with the logo. I'm going to go ahead and grab this UX hacks logo. And I'm going to grab, I think, the dark version of it. Fortunately, the groupings didn't transfer over, but that's OK. I will group them now and then push this over into where our logo is going to go. So I'm going to delete this text and just kind of size it up or size it down so that it fits. There we go. I will probably go much smaller than this in terms of sizing. And if you guys don't mind, I'm going to turn on a little bit of music. Let's go ahead and chill. This is supposed to be a fun and chill live stream. So let's go ahead and get some tunes on. And I'm going to just lower the volume a little bit just because I don't want to bother you guys with it, but I don't want it to just be dead space either. All right, so we've got our logo. Let's go ahead and I guess let's make this white for now. And let's think about what our color is going to be for the call to action. Uh, we can go maybe something like red, right? Or maybe we can do like a blue or a yellow with dark text. So I'm going to actually mock this up a few different ways so that we can kind of take a look at it because I know that the primary CTA, the color is actually pretty important. So we want to take some time to actually work that out. And I want to see what it's going to look like when it's repeated, at least in a few different places and kind of how my eye is going to move around. So I'm going to also change the color here at the top. And I'm just going to kind of take a look at this because I'm curious. Let's also change this text. We're going to have to reduce the sizing on all of these substantially, and we'll get to that in just a second. But let me take a look at some of this color theory and see what I think. So there's the yellow, which is interesting. It kind of does jump out at you. There's the blue, which pretty standard. A lot of businesses use blue. Blue usually represents like uh, trust, usually yellow is more energetic, excited, creative, blue, more trust, safe, secure. And then red is usually associated with urgency, um, something of importance, um, something fast. So probably blue or yellow. Red is good, but 
we don't necessarily want them to feel rushed and we don't want them to feel like this is an emergency or anything like that. We want them to either, you know, feel safe or feel excited. So we're probably going to go with like a blue or a yellow. Feel free to vote in the chat what your favorite call to action color would be here. Uh, if it should be blue or if it should be yellow. A lot of people love orange. Uh, so I think the yellow might really work, but I think if we use yellow in another creative way, like for example, let's say this background color is yellow, then the blue really stands out, you know? And for this one, let's say, let's try like a dark version maybe. White text. And for this stuff, I'm gonna just set it to black and then up the opacity a little bit just so that there's a placeholder there. And we'll talk about the strategy that we're going to take right now for this header part, but let's take a look. There's the dark version and then the yellow version. The yellow version is very UX hacks, like the current website, just because we do have a lot of yellow. It's white and then yellow, which is very similar. This bottom part. Let's see. Again, we're just kind of experimenting today, right? Seeing what is going to drive people's eyes to where we want it to go. something like that the dark colors are good because uh the dark colors are usually associated with like something premium uh which we are selling a premium service this is not a very cheap service that we're selling um so i think the dark colors really work well i do kind of like the yellow call to action the more that i see it the more i i like it but I don't know this looks interesting but it's a little overwhelming all of the yellow versus if we use the yellow just for call to actions it's very easy to kind of see it hmm. all right we're gonna keep kind of exploring here let's get some of these font sizes adjusted so 32 way too big for header text let's try maybe like 21 for these i'm gonna also take this button and just turn on the padding and then we can go and update the sizing and that will update the button size as well for us. There we go. Drag that into position. We got coding after 20 says, man, I'm here after a long time. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, my friend. Welcome back to the stream. Good to have you. All right. So let's see. Let's adjust the button size here as well. To a reasonable size let's hit that padding button and again 21 pixels for these buttons there we go and maybe we're gonna do for the ctas all caps We don't need to do it for the transitionary one, but for these buttons, I think it would look good. And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a placeholder. Now we are not gonna just use an image here. We're not gonna use like a stock photo or anything like that. Just because I don't wanna, I don't wanna cheapen the website experience by using those kinds of things. And the clients that I have, they can just tell, you know, when something is stock. So what I want to do instead is use video ask so if you guys are not familiar with what video ask is i'm going to show you guys a website really quick that i think uses it very very effectively so that you guys can kind of see what i'm going to be going for for my website because right now 
I went ahead and updated a couple of weeks ago the user experience uh, on stream to have this free website UX review. We put a calendar widget in here and it's just not converting as well as I thought it would be, um, which is concerning. So what I want to do is I want to go and instead start to use video on my landing pages because I think video is going to really, really help me connect with prospects and really sell our services. So I really like what the future did. Um, yellow buttons, love it. But you can see here, this is the founder, Chris Doe, and he's actually here talking to you, the website user. And let's see if I can go ahead and, and pause this. And I'm gonna go ahead and play this because I want you guys to see how this works. So this is his hero, and there's this video by Video Ask. And if you click on it, I'm Chris Doe, designer and entrepreneur, here to teach people how to make a living doing what they love. What can I help you with? Right, so we can get them started into our funnel and ask them what they need help with without having them actually scroll down the page and reading too much information. So we're able to create videos <clears throat> that we can link together with Logic and based on what their response is, we can show them a different video. So here, let's go ahead and say, I wanna start a business and let's see what Chris Doe has to say. All right, so you wanna start a business. Whether you're ready to go freelance, pursue a side hustle, or build an empire, starting your own business is exciting. So congratulations. I've been in business for over 25 years, so learn from my mistakes and save yourself some time by getting a head start. Here are some resources that can help you do that. So now that he's pushing people into relevant landing pages to get them deeper into the funnel. So we just took them from the very top of the funnel you don't know who the future is and you don't know who Chris Doe is. You just met him in just a few seconds. And now he's already trying to push you into the next phase, which is from awareness into interest, trying to get you interested in either some templates that they sell or potentially some other courses. So if we click learn more about starting a business, it's actually gonna redirect us to a page that has more information about that topic where I can learn, but I can also go and actually uh, buy some um, can you buy anything here? Yeah, so you can buy some courses, but you can also listen to podcast episodes. You can go and get like a freebie, like a free workbook. So this page, again, it's targeted towards business owners. And we want to do something very, very similar on the UX Hacks website. We want to make it easier for people to kind of engage with us. So I want to kind of think about doing a video ask video just like that one. Um, the one thing I did forget to do is I want to get the dimensions of like kind of the video and what it's gonna look like. I'm just gonna screenshot this bad boy really quick. And then I'm going to paste that into XD. And here we've got kind of like a video as video. I'm sure we can adjust the sizing as needed, but we're gonna use this as kind of like a baseline. And let me just really quickly inspect here. And all I'm doing, shut up, Chris Doe, is I'm gonna I'm going to click on this um, inspector tool. And I'm gonna hover over this. Now, when I hover over it, usually it will give me a width and a height. So if I come into, hopefully, this parent element, it'll give me 640 by 921. So well, now I have the size of my rectangle. 640 by, what was it? 941. Okay, so we'll go ahead and create a rectangle. And it will be 640 by, what was it? 921, something like that. And let's round out the edges. We'll do, hmm, do 10 pixels, do 20. All right, let's bring that in. And we can kind of put this and confirm that it is the right size. Let's go ahead and move our reference up. We don't need that anymore, at least not for right now. And this is our video. I'm going to shrink it, maintaining the aspect ratio. But I'm going to shrink this to, let's say, 500 width at a maximum. And then I'm going to bring in the heading as well. I'm going to get rid of this because we don't need it. 
And let's center this guy. And let's get the music back on. No, not you, Crystal. The music. There we go. All right. So here is our video ask. We're going to do a couple things to this. I'm going to add a drop shadow. I'm going to add like 30 to the blur. And we're going to have to, I'm going to reduce this fill and then reduce this opacity. So we have it as a placeholder. Now I'm going to make this video ask circle right here, like this play button. And we're just going to do uh, play for the icon. And we're going to use font awesome here. So here's our play and center it, size it up, reduce the opacity of the circle that I created so that I can get the sizing of everything perfect. And again, it doesn't have to be, but because this is an embed, so it's not going to really matter. The developer is not going to get the handoff, but I do want it to look as similar as possible. There we go. And for the color, it's black, so we'll use that. Okay, so here's our play button. Group it, add that in. Awesome. So this is where we would appear, maybe a little bit lower. There we go. And let's see if we can get like a headshot in there as if it's actually me talking. Uh, let me see what I can do. Files here. And how's everybody doing? What are you guys up to on Friday? How's your new year been? This is the first first week of the new year officially ends today. Hopefully you guys have had a better time of it this year than last year. And definitely be uh, better than the year before that. Let's see. I've got, I think, a bunch of videos here that have my face and then a bunch of random headshots that I use. Hmm. Again, the video is not too important, but I do want something that at least would serve as a placeholder. So let's do this. I'm going to open, open this in Photoshop. I'm just click open and we're going to do some super quick Photoshopping. Let's see. Let's go to unsplash and grab a background image. We're going to pretend that we're in an office. We're going to Photoshop ourselves in there. Something like this is fine. The computer doesn't even need to show. You'll see now. But all we're going to do is this image already on a green screen. I'm going to unlock it. We're going to remove background. And you got to love Adobe Sensei, that AI that they built. One button click. Boom, completely remove the green. Uh, now I can go ahead and flatten the image. Oh, actually, let's just create a new layer. I'm going to merge these two. Now, there's still some green in my hair. What I'm going to do there is I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation. I did that with Control or Command U. You can also do that by going to Edit and then... Uh, where are you? No, you go to image and then you go to adjustment and then you go to hue and saturation. So again, control U. And all we're doing here is we're taking the green slider and we're putting it all the way down. Now the green kind of disappeared from that corner. So this is going to be our image. And all we're going to do now is grab this. Well, actually, we're going to save it. Um, save it transparent. Save that. We already have this one saved, so we're going to pull both into Adobe XD really quickly. So file, import, and we're going to import the background, excuse me, the background image first. It's huge. And I'm going to first put this in a container. So here I pasted the container and then I pasted the image 
one on top of the other and i'm going to do Control shift m to mask you can do Control shift or command shift or you can right click both and then um let's see is there a mask button here you can right click both or select both and then click mask with shape and it'll do the exact same thing so from here now i can drag this around that it is appropriately sized make it look like an office there we go all right now we're gonna pull in the photo that we just did of me uh no idea where that is david transparent there we go and again we're gonna paste that inside the mask adjust the sizing here a little bit there we go this is our placeholder now it looks real but it's not we're gonna drag this back in okay now we have pretty short everything we need here so grouped everything together Taking a look at this, there's also a Powered by Video Ask, we don't need to worry about that. Yeah. Okay, I think the one thing that we're missing though, is this drop shadow. I just don't, I don't see the drop shadow because it's a mask. So we're gonna add that in at the very bottom the opacity all the way and just move that behind it that way the mask doesn't cut off this drop shadow even now i can't really see it what about here it's there though it's hard to see because we're on a dark background for that maybe increasing the opacity of this to make it more dramatic Hold up. Uh, <laughs> do I want anything from Panera? Yes, I want something from Panera. Get me a... <laughs> get me a sandwich. Or a, a you pick two with a sandwich and a soup. Just pick whatever, it's fine. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Mar Omari says, Happy New Year. Who knows what to expect this year? Just trying to keep up. That's right. We're just all trying to survive this thing. All right, so here is kind of our starting point. Now for this other part, which are the successes, let's reduce the font again. Let's go to 21. And then let's see if maybe we can, <laughs> we can come up with, a, with an icon for each of these. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do to kind of find icons on the web. Um, I can show you how to do it for free and then how to do it with paid premium icons. Um, I, to give you guys full transparency, I'm going to pick icons like that are stock premium stock icons for now. And then I'm going to push this off to a designer who's going to design custom icons just for my website. So we're going to use placeholders for now, and then we're going to push them off to a designer who is going to build them out to be custom for us using our brand colors and our style. So more website conversions, fewer unqualified leads, and excellent core web vital scores. So let's go ahead and find some icons. Nope. Let's go to shutterstock.com. That's what I use to find icons that are uh, really high quality. Now you, due to unusual what? Okay, hold up. I got to apparently reset my password. What a pain, but we're going to do it. Okay, there we go, slowly resetting my password. All right, now I'm logging in. Sorry about that, guys. Now that that's done. We can start working through 
finding these icons. So I like to use Shutterstock. It is a paid service. It is on the pricier side, but it has the highest quality icons, um, in my opinion, on the web. Uh, you can use other things. So we've got someone in the chat. We got Brandon. He says, do you use flat icon? Sometimes. Sometimes I use flat icon. Uh, sometimes I use um, font awesome for my icons. Uh, there's so many different ways that you can actually get icons. You don't always have to go with like the premium paid solution. There's a ton of other ones. This one, Font Awesome, is paid. Um, some of the flat icon ones are paid, but I do believe that they have a lot of free ones. And if you look up uh, free website icons, you can find a lot online. So Icons 8 has some. There's also the Noun Project which this has a bunch of different free icons and stock photos. So here you can search something like website and it's going to give you a bunch of different icons that you can go and you can download from across the web. So this is a really, really great place if you just don't have the budget. Uh, but I'm not in that place. We make money with our website, so we have some budget. And we're going to go ahead and look up some icons here. I'm going to increase because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm seeing. Got a bunch of text come in all at once. Sorry about that. All right. So icon for a website and specifically we have to come up with an icon for more website conversions, fewer unqualified leads and excellent core web vital score. So conversions, leads and performance are kind of like the three big ones. So let's take a look at some of these icon packs because the icon packs are going to have a lot of different icons that we can use to kind of brainstorm what we want and i'm going to show you what i do just to kind of test to see what's going to work before i go and actually pay for a pack or anything like that so let's take a look at let's say this one this is a website related icons and let's say hmm i'm not too sure about these Look at a few more by this artist. Oh, these are not too great. Let's see, maybe these SEO icons. And again, website performance. I like this page speed icon a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screenshot that icon so that I can kind of pull this in and kind of see how this would work, right? And I think it makes sense, right? Like this icon. In my opinion, lines up pretty well with what the success is or what the guarantee is here. But what about these other ones? This is where it gets difficult, right? Because you want to make sure that the icons that you're using look visually similar. Because if you're using icons that have different weights, people are going to notice that they're not from the same series, right? It's not from the same pack. They look like they don't go together. We want to make sure that our icons are either from the same series, the same artist, at the very least, look visually similar, similar um, thicknesses, similar style, right? Um, just so that it doesn't look off. Now for this other one, which is fewer unqualified leads. I like this target because it's like we're targeting what kind of leads we want. There's also higher conversions. Um, the keyword ranking one is good. The pay-per-click one I think is good. Okay, target audience. I think audience targeting, this one's pretty good in my opinion, for fewer unqualified leads. Because that's what we're saying is we're going to help you find better quality leads. But let's actually change it to that higher quality. Um, higher quality leads. There we go. And again, this is not what we're going to end up with, but this is how we're going to start planning a little bit better. And then more website conversions. 
I kind of want to see if they have like another pack that's similar. And usually if you go and you look at like um, this artist, they'll have more from the same collection. And then usually these are all in a very similar style because they're in the same collection. So the one for conversions. Let's see if we can find a really good icon somewhere here. I'm going to click see all so that we can actually take a, a deeper dive into these icons and see if there's a good one for like conversion rate optimization or something, something we could use here. And this is just one of the boring parts of design, you know, finding really good assets, really important, uh, but the process is extremely boring. And the more picky you are, the longer it takes, unfortunately. Hmm. Not a whole lot here that would look like conversions. I mean, the line chart. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to just put a giant money bag. Kind of cheesy. I do like the idea of the click, like just having someone clicking on something because that's what we're promising. We want to turn more clicks into conversions. Hmm. But I feel like it's not straightforward enough for people, which is tough. I'm also seeing some alternative icons here that would be good. So for example, this one has this optimization icon, which this one could be good for, let's say the core web vitals. So I can kind of drop these in next to each other or on top of each other. And I can kind of see which one I like more. I, I like that one more. see more conversions more conversions mm I guess we'll try the click. I don't want to spend too long searching for icons if we're just going to have a designer kind of design their own based on our direction, but it is important that we give them very clear direction here anyways, so that they're not trying to guess what we want. They know exactly what we're expecting. So here's the last few from the set. I don't really see anything that's better than that for conversions. I don't want to just use really cheesy icons of little man standing next to a chart that's pointing up. Uh, so cheesy. I want something that people understand what it is when they're looking at it right away. I'm also going to go ahead and just search for a conversion icon to see if there's anything. Conversions. No. What about CRO icon? Am I searching only from this artist or what? Feels like I'm not getting all the results there. So like a funnel? Hmm. I guess. I don't think that's a great icon, to be honest. Conversions icon. Okay, we're just going to move on. Z 
because this is a very easily something that you can get stuck on for 30 minutes or an hour searching for the perfect icon. We don't need to do that. We can always replace the icon later if we find a better one. So let's go with this PPC icon, just someone clicking on something. And let's drop that in as a placeholder. Size these appropriately so that they're all the same. Roughly. So let's take a look at this. More website conversions, higher quality leads, and excellent core web vital scores. Okay, I like these icons. I think they work. I don't want to overcomplicate them. So what we're going to do, I'm going to hit download. This has all three of the icons that we need. I'm going to download that package. That's going to give me the file that I can open in Illustrator and start to pull these icons out in super high quality. So... First, website optimization. Actually, it's this one, page speed. First icon, we're gonna grab that. We're gonna import it right here. We're gonna update the color. I'm gonna open this group. And we're gonna update the color of all these paths and lines to be white. And this rectangle, same deal, white. Very cool. Now this is going to be resized. We replace this icon. Kind of up to us what size we want to use. Now, if you are trying to resize in something like Adobe XD, the way that I am, sometimes you're going to try to resize and it's going to try to maintain the thickness of some of these lines. So if I try to bring this down, you'll start to see that it starts to look funkier and funkier and funkier until it's illegible and to fix this all you have to do is click responsive resize and that way it will go and kind of scale things down for you as best as it can sometimes it's not going to work on the parent so you're going to have to do it on the parent and then go inside of the actual children and make sure that responsive resize is off as well it does look like it's off but it seems like it's still not resizing properly so when this happens, I'm going to show you guys what to do. You're going to literally export it in Illustrator. So we've got our icon here. I'm going to change all the colors to white. Hello, white. And then with this, I'm going to go ahead and export this. Can I add this to a library? If you add it to the library, you should be able to import it as well. But yeah, for some reason, just network settings today with Adobe don't want to be dependent on that. So we're just going to take this icon. Right here. And hello. I'm going to group it so that everything's together. And how do we select for export as single asset? There we go. And we can go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this um, optimization icon. And we're gonna do this again with the other icon. So it was this paper click setup icon is the one that we're going to be using for uh, the first one. So let's go ahead and change the color to white. And let's group it. And we'll collect it for export as a single asset and we'll name this conversion icon and then finally we've got the middle icon which was higher quality leads this target audience icon so again i select these bad boys we're gonna group them make them white You don't have to move them up. You don't have to move them at all. I just like to have them here so that I can see what I'm doing. But right click, collect for export as single asset. And we'll name this um, audience icon. All right, those are all done. We're now going to export them as SVGs. 
select all three one two three export uh for folder we'll do downloads that's fine all right that should be it we should be able to now import our icons and use them in our web design go to file import uh downloads svg and we've got our three icons here import there we go now you should be able to resize these properly because they are svgs i'm going to pull them out and we'll go one by one and drag them in let's make sure that they resize properly oh still got that issue responsive resize turn that off okay well now you're just making me look bad and i don't appreciate it let's see there might be export options that we need to set up here so VG. We convert to outlines. Let me see. I got to do a quick Google search. I can't remember how we fixed this before. Event SVG. Responsive resize. Adobe XD. I am not the only person that has this problem, trust me. If you're on Adobe XD, you might have this issue too. It says that all I need to do is switch it off, but I did switch it off and now I'm mad because it's not working. And it's not working because of the border sizing here. Like you can see the border size is the one that's set to 15th. So what we can do is you come into here and we're going to right click. No, we're going to go select the icon that we want to work on. We're going to go to, I think, object and expand. And then we're going to expand the fill and the stroke. That's going to make it so that it's not set to a border. And instead, when we export it now, it's just going to be uh, kind of like an, an object. So that issue won't happen anymore so again we're going to do this one more time the question is um how do you prevent svgs from what's the exact word from distorting so how do you prevent svgs from distorting in adobe xd and the easy answer is to just take that in illustrator first and then hit object expand okay and that will prevent any distortions from happening to your icon so again select your icon object expand okay and now let's go we're going to copy this and let's just paste it in and try that resize one more time and now you see we can resize it perfectly no issues here so let's get that sizing Something like this. I'm going to make note of how big this is. It's about 70 pixels in height. Because we want all of them to be similar sizes. Right. We're going to do that again. Grab the target audience one. That's about 70 pixels in height go pull that in just moving things a little closer together to play with the spacing and then finally this page speed one we'll do the same thing pull that in 70 pixels height That's fine. Here we go. Okay, so now that we have our icons, we can start to play with how it's going to actually look. And these placeholders, obviously, way too wide. 
We're going to bring them in substantially. Okay, 330. See what that looks like. A look here I want to add some text here that gives them kind of an overview of what's in this section Our websites help businesses increase conversion rates. Enter this a little bit better. Find higher quality leads. Okay, increase conversion rates and engagement. Okay, I'm just making sure things are centered. Find higher quality leads. Our websites help businesses. Rank four. Uh, competitive keywords. rods keywords so again we're we're talking right here about the benefit that they're going to get from actually getting a website from us right that's what we want them to understand is that our websites help you do xyz things I'm going to just kind of try to get all of these aligned. Let's see what we got here. We got the Fox now has joined the chat. He says, hello. Are you just front or full stack? I am a full stack designer and developer, um, a website owner, uh, and a agency owner as well. So I build websites for myself. I build websites for my clients. Plan them, design them, code them, launch them, and grow them. All the things, my friend. All the things. All right. Our websites help businesses do X, Y, Z thing. Okay. I think that's fine. Again, don't want to overcomplicate things. Let's move on here. We might want to... maybe add something that encourages them to click. So I'm going to go back onto Shutterstock for just a second. And I'm going to show you guys an easy way to do that. Uh, I'm going to just search up uh, arrow. And that's going to give me a bunch of different arrows that I can use here. And we can kind of pick which style we like. I like this handwritten kind of style. I'm going to download this. Open that up. We'll close out Photoshop because we don't need it. My computer will thank me. And I'll do one of these little curvy guys. Bring that in. 
let's adjust the color. I'm going to flip this stuff around a little bit. And we should include a good message here and not just click me. Um, what would be some, some good copy here? A look at this might need to bring everything in this way now to kind of balance everything out okay, okay. we can always update this stuff a little bit. I think we're going to explore a little bit more of the style, but I'd like to go ahead and just start moving on down to this next section. So this is a place where we can kind of talk about what your website might have, any issues that your website might have. So don't really want to use just like whatever stock photo here. It's really important that we get something good. Let's see what we can find. I think we're probably gonna make our own graphics here. Well, this is the graphic that I actually use for this stream, this um, stream, and I do like this graphic. I think that we could potentially use something like that. You could also use like a device mock-up, you know, that has the website shown on a few different devices. Let's see what it would look like with this. I'm kind of curious. There are a lot of like these types of illustrations that have like people doing things. I don't know how I feel about them though. I don't know if I want to go that route for this website. But then again, this is to provide some direction to our illustrator. So it's not like we're going to use these final images. And one thing that we could do is potentially just have the designer replace the character with the uh, pixel art version of me. So that might be something to consider actually. Let me see if I can find just a website illustration. Oh, went to the wrong place. Let me see, website illustration. If we find something really really nice there's also like you could use and i think this would be actually really cool is um you can use like a lottie file and do like an animated icon which is really really cool and what's really cool about adobe xd now is you can just actually import that directly into adobe xd which i think is pretty dope actually actually i really like this one I'm not gonna lie oh, they really want me to sign in right now or sign up one second as I answer those prompts, okay. I like this one, this is pretty cool. I wanna see more from this artist. Search the word website and see kind of what we see here. 
I like this one a lot. Very simple. Very, very simple. Uh, I don't remember if it will accept a Lottie JSON or not. So we're going to see. I'm going to drag this in. We're going to see. It does. It does actually accept it. Very interesting. And if we play it, it actually plays. This is one of the cooler features of Adobe XD. Adding that Lottie stuff in. And then you can come in here and you can say, do you want it to play automatically? And you can even edit kind of what the playback is going to be like. I thought there was a way that you can set it to just continue, like playing. Oh, this loop, loop playback, yeah. That way when you see it, it'll just keep looping. I think we can do much better than this, TBH, but let's keep looking here. Because this is going to be like this one a lot too. One of the first graphics that they see other than my face so we don't want it to just be any random stock image right we want it to reflect the quality of work that we're going to be bringing to their website i think it's really important that we do that like these icons too it'd be really cool we might make some some animated icons if that's something that you guys want to see on a stream definitely let me know uh and the comments are in the chat because i've been wanting to do a um, Lottie and After Effects live stream for a while so that I can show you guys how to actually create your very own icons and illustrations for your websites. There's also Icon Scouts, which has premium, premium stuff that you can go and actually buy. All the ones that I'm browsing here are free. And you can also come in here and you can go and find animators and hire them to create your own custom animations, which is really cool as well. I feel like all the popular ones are pretty cheesy. So this animator only has one. And this was added a day ago. Let's see what this guy's got. A lot of Christmas stuff. I wish I had filtering and sorting on these pages, but I don't have to go through uh, however many pages there are of these. This is definitely made from like another illustration pack and he's just like animating it. So he's not the original artist or anything here. Take a look at some of these. This is social. This one's just not as high quality as the others. I kind of like this one. Let's take a look at it. Inside of the actual design. Much larger, which I appreciate. Should be able to flip this too, right? Oh, click the wrong button there. Can you not flip these? No, it has to be the same direction. Hmm. See, I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these things. And again, we're going to copy over these buttons.
Oh, we got to set that to loop. There we go. This is it. I don't know how I feel about this. I like the style, but it doesn't really talk too much to what the copy is saying. Sorry guys, I had to block somebody here on Facebook for spreading spam. Uh, it doesn't actually kind of talk about, or it doesn't show the emotion that users are going to have when they're reading this, which is they're worried about their website. They're not sitting here smiling, right? I just want to move this over. I feel like it's going to work better like that. adjusting the spacing here i also want to adjust these colors while we're in here start using this dark blue that we use the check marks we're going to use our green Have this just say get started and potentially make it yellow so that it blends in a little bit better all right let's move on to this next section how we can help i'm gonna go blue again trust trust is the keyword here now for each of these I'm not sure if we're going to keep them like this. I also really don't know if we're just going to keep using these animations. But again, the actual creative we can switch out anytime. Let me take a look at some of these premium ones. These premium or... I guess they're not all premium. They're just on Icon Scout. Let's see if we find anything better. This one's interesting. Little stick people. Like this a lot for our icons or something this is pretty cool too there's definitely a lot here I don't want to see more from this artist and see what they have This artist has a lot of interesting icons too. If this artist has other ones, this one. Too.
They've got a bunch of packs, clearly. I like these two. They're pretty approachable. And if you change the, uh, the colors, we can get it to match the brand guidelines pretty easily. Let's take a look at this one more time. Does your website have these issues? So This one's nice, but they're building and we're trying to find problems on the website. So I saw one that was magnifying glass and this one's good. It's for search engine optimization, but it's also could be like we're looking for issues on your site. And it has this one that is a little toned down a little bit in terms of colors. I like the toned down version a lot. This is really cool because you don't have to actually know how to design all this stuff. You just need to kind of know what you're trying to communicate. And if you are willing to invest in the assets, you can go and you can find a lot of really great illustrations and animations that you could use to build your website. Really like this artist. I think we might actually use some from there. Let's see these other ones. Pretty complicated. And I want to go more simple. A lot of what we do is like user experience wireframes. Um, so kind of showing how things are outlines, I think would be really helpful. And I like to use illustrations and animations that I know are part of a series that I'm going to be able to get others from or potentially hire uh, the artist to help make more for me. So I really like Greg's stuff. Smashing Stocks has a lot, but it's really difficult to uh, see it because they have so many items. So many items like a million different icons. Oh, Lottie animations. That's what we're looking for. Cool. These are interesting. I like the style a lot. The fact that they look hand drawn, not these, but the outline ones. I think they're really cool. There's so many different ones. I view as a pack, emoji, and a lot of animation packs. Mm. This doesn't have everything. So some of these I like, like this one. Or the drawing tablet, and these question marks. These are all really cool. Let me see what his latest work looks like. He's been doing a lot of line work recently. A lot of these are really random. Okay, we're going to move on. We're going to use Greg, Greg the box. And we're going to use specifically this one. An all access subscription. What is this? Twelve ninety nine a month. That's worth it. I'm really quickly just gonna check out over on my other screen, guys. So if you guys can just give me a second while I do.
All right, one second while the payment processes. Like it's done. Cool. Now we can go and start downloading our assets. So again, we wanted this one for now, but specifically the toned down version right here. All right, now we can go ahead and download this as a JSON. And we can start to use this in our design. So sorry to this one, but we're going to go ahead and move it. Move things back to where they were. what this looks like and I'm curious what this looks like let me open it with code Jesus Christ let's not how can we change the colors on these Lottie change colors on Lottie Animation. Oh, there's a Lottie editor that we could use here. To help us change these colors. All right, let's drop that in. And here are our colors. Let's see if we can replace this purpley looking thing. Looks like it works, yeah. Yeah. Then we can change the orange to yellow. I don't see any red. I don't know why there's a red here. Close that out. Hmm. I guess we'll just put blue to replace red. Even though there's no red being used, but whatever. I'm glad this is very easy to actually update the colors. It saves me a lot of time. Hello. I was just talking about how you saved me a lot of time. Okay. Well, that's going to take however long it wants to take, I guess. We will go ahead and give it a second to think. And keep working through here. So how we can help are these four things. For these, I don't think I want to use icons or illustrations. Hmm. But it definitely would help them understand a little bit better what's going on. This thing is frozen. Let's just refresh here and not touch the red one. Clearly, that is going to cause some issues. So, again, change these colors one more time. Orange to yellow. And then let me see what purple as blue would look like. Oh, you can even edit individual things. Oh, and I can toggle visibility of that line. Good, because I don't really like that line. Uh, yeah, I think this looks good. Let's export this as an updated Lottie file. And we're going to just replace that one with this one. And now when we take a look... Does your website have these issues? And it's kind of like someone searching through the website for potential problems. 
which I like very much. There's another thing that we haven't really figured out, which is what the alternate state is going to be for these buttons. So let's do that really quick. When someone hovers, I'm going to create a component and we're going to add a hover state. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to make uh, the background blue and the text white. I'm going to cut that out and we're going to leave the main up here and instead I'm going to add uh, an instance of this and we're going to replace all of these with instances now. So paste that in, replace the text and you may need to replace the text for both the default and the hover state so make sure you do that. There we go. Now we're gonna do it again down here. I was wondering if I can like get it down there or get it cut off here, but the spacing is all wrong. I want the spacing to be pretty even between the top and the bottom, so that's fine. And then we're going to come back to this header to make it visually more interesting. But I like this section. Does your website have these things? Have an expert take a look. And then how we can help are these four unique services, a website UX audit, website UI UX design, custom theme development, and then website CRO. Hmm. Let's take a look at this artist that we were looking at here and see if maybe he's got some good. Oh, there's an edit Lottie file right here or an edit Lottie button. I did not see that. I like this for the UX audit stuff because this is what we do. We do the research, um, the design stuff. I like this one for development. This is a good one for CRO. Or web web development. I actually like this one a lot for design. Oh, this is a good one for web development as well. And we're using the thin line versions, right? Yeah, we're using these. See, I'm opening up a few different ones because I want to have some options here. For the coding, I'm not too sure. These are cool too.
This is a good one for CRL too. This one. This is different though. I guess for the development one, the best one is the team that's developing. Together like this. All right, let's take a look at some of these. We're using the thin line version, so not that one, not this one, not this one, not this one. These, the thin line version. So first, let's start with the website UX audit, which is the research and strategy phase. This I like for building your site plan. We're going to come back to this one. I'll pin this. This one is like design. This one's interesting because each of these four. Actually, no, because there's none for conversion rate optimization. Does this one not have a thin line version? Or actually, we might be able to use the solid one because we have a solid background on here instead of the white. Let's see, we might, we might still use that one. Already got that one. Hmm. I like this one too for, up for development. Some of you guys may think it's silly how long I'm spending just finding the right imagery here. But in my experience, just having imagery that doesn't necessarily speak to the copy does more harm than good. So it's worth you spending a little bit extra time just making sure that whatever it is that you guys are picking complements the copy well. Let's see, I like these two. Oh, here's the thin line one for CRO. Let's go ahead and just pull one of these in and start creating, creating the section. Let's start with this one for a website UX audit. We're going to go to click edit Lottie. This is going to go to the Lottie editor where we can start to change some of these colors to our brand colors. I'm going to go with this dark one first. There we go. Make some changes here. Update that. So orange, we're going to go, I think yellow. We might have to change, remove the background color and use a different color. We'll see how it looks. You gotta be flexible guys when you're building UIs, you know? You gotta work with the assets you have and tell the best story you can. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of the line because I hate it. I wish I can click on it. Line outlines. This one. I'll go visibility here. Turn that off. Perfect. Okay. Let me go ahead and then export this. And we're going to bring this in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out really quickly or pull this down rather. 
because I want to have enough space here to kind of think. Let's see, let's create a section here. Let's try making it blue and let's bring in this animation. I see, so they don't have any like colors. Like, uh, I don't know. You can see that they're just outlines. They don't have like any solid colors or anything like that. But it might be a little difficult to use blue here. We might be better off using white. Unless we want to go completely dark and change. <laughs> They're in the dark. They've got glow in the dark swag. Uh, but we might want to change maybe a version where instead of using this dark color, we use white. See what that looks like. And luckily we can change this very quickly, export another version of it, and we can very easily just replace it so that we can actually take a look. It didn't actually replace it, but that's okay. I will try again. Okay. Very well. I don't know why it doesn't want to update now. Maybe this one. At least it has the right colors. It looks scary. Like they're going to murder you. I don't like it. But I don't like that either. So we might do like a gray. A nice, neutral, unassuming gray. So that people don't get mad. Move this down, bring up the header that says how we can help. And update the color on. Plenty of spacing. Yeah. Website UX audit is the first one. We're going to reduce the size here. And we'll get rid of these bullet points. Okay, and let's copy this text that we have. I'm going to move this up here. line height is ridiculous 30s all this copy will improve a bit later but i just want to get this content out And for the action here, we can say request a UX audit. That again, everything subject to change as we go and learn more here.
scroll down does your website have these things how we can help oh gotta turn this lottie animation on loop how we can help website ux audit Trying to figure out what is the appropriate sizing here. I like that. Pretty straightforward. How we can help. One, two, three. Let's see, maybe we duplicate this a couple of times. move this out and we have four individual products and services paste in these very quickly And if you guys are still here in the chat, let me know. Let me know if you guys are still here watching. If I'm still here with somebody. Uh, some theme development. And then finally, uh, conversion rate optimization. And 36 is the line height. No, nope, that's way. Sorry. 56 is the Wow, Mari, you still here, bro? I'm surprised, man. You know, usually people are so busy on Fridays. But I've been having a lot of fun getting all my work done up by Friday so that I can just stream. All right, let's take a look at this. We haven't replaced any of the icons, but and we're probably going to switch things up. I feel that, man. Always got to be juggling stuff. All right, let's try making it so that every other image is on the other side. Over here. And all the text is over here. Text is supposed to be here. So we're just offsetting things to make them look like visually it's not the same pattern being repeated over and over. So website UX audit, website UX UI design, these images, I want to push them a little bit further out here. go how we can help website ux ui design custom theme development conversion rate optimization and a final call to action here and what we're going to do is we're going to change all of the buttons actually because i don't want to repeat a bunch of buttons People get really tired of seeing call to actions. I call it button fatigue. So we don't want them to get fatigued. Instead, we're going to change all of these into link links instead of buttons and have one button on the bottom. Get a free project estimate. That's going to be our primary call to action. And we're going to change all these buttons now. Oh, this is supposed to be here. There we go. 
But all these buttons are going to change into text links now. Schedule. Let's auto. And we're going to use a little arrow using Font Awesome. Again, you can use whatever icons you want. I just like to use Font Awesome because I'm lazy. And actually, I'll do this the right way. Now we're going to go ahead and turn that into an object. And I did that with Control-8. You can also do that by going to Object. And then, uh, let me see. Object, Path, Convert to Path. And now it's just like a, an outline here. So I'm going to set this up to... Um, Schedule my UX audit. There you go. We're going to put these bad boys together. And you, my friend, you have the honor of being blue. There we go. This action, this text needs to change too. So let's paste in the correct text here and update the call to action. Inversion. And actually, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stack it so that it's always adjusting the distance of the arrow to be 15 pixels and now i'm gonna rewrite this call to action uh help me design my website and i want to see what it looks like all caps i think we might actually go all caps again i'm gonna stack this make the text all caps let's move on here Again, place this text. Help me code my website. Help me design my website. Help me. Help me plan my website redesign. This is a much more straightforward call to action. Help me design my website, help me code my website. And then finally, help me optimize my website. So we're almost done with this section, flying through it, it seems. I'm very excited to get this launched. Help me optimize inversion or help me optimize my website. Okay. All right, let's take a look before we start adding all the new illustrations at just kind of like what the structure looks like. And we can always add other stuff to make it look visually interesting as we go. So how we can help, you can get a website UX audit. You can, the call to action is to help me plan my website redesign, um, website UX UI design, help me design my website, custom theme development, help me code my website and conversion rate optimization help me optimize my website and get a pre-fraud free project a free project estimate 
is the primary call to action. There's some weirdness happening here. Like it's moving somehow for some reason. Um, what's up with that? Why are you moving? Stop moving. Why are you moving? Nonsense. There. Okay, let's go ahead and switch out all these illustrations. And then I'm going to take a super short break. But don't worry, I'll be right back. I'm not leaving you, I promise. So for designing the website, this is the a good one for optimization. I think this is the one for coding. For designing, this is the one for CRO. I'm going to click edit on that. This is the one for theme development. Like edit on that. And then this is the one for design, I think. That's an alternate for. Th so click edit on this one. This is the theme design one. And again, we're just changing out the colors to make it match our website. And we're going this dark color. We still need to change the font families too, but we're going to get to that right after this break. Go ahead and change this dark purple to our dark blue. Let's go and change that orange to our yellow. Now we can move on. Hit update. Go ahead and export that. We got Brandon Luna in the chat. He wants to know, is your website using a page builder or you custom code everything in the theme? Uh, I don't ever use a page builder because it has a negative impact on performance and performance is very, very important for me and the websites that I build. So everything that I design, we code as a custom block in Gutenberg. Uh, either through JavaScript or using advanced custom themes. We will never use anything like Elementor or Beaver Builder or Divi. Um, and that's just because we can't guarantee uh, positive performance scores without having to do a lot of really weird hacky stuff with it. I like to have performance optimized themes that are going to be fast and not going to cause any issues with Google Core Web Vitals. That's why we develop all of our themes ourselves from scratch. Um, anything that I work on is usually uh, built using something like uh, underscores, which is literally just a boilerplate theme. We're going to be developing this as a custom theme as well, but we're probably going to be using a slightly different process. We've got uh, WordPress 5.9 is coming out in January 25th of this year. And with WordPress 5.9 is going to come full site editing features that is going to allow you to use Gutenberg blocks everywhere on your website, including widgets, uh, your footer, your header or navigation. The entire website is going to be editable through blocks and templates. So we're going to be exploring all of that good stuff when it comes out um, by building this theme together. So again, if you guys haven't already, do me the favor and please go ahead and like this video, subscribe if you have not, and hit that little bell notification if you don't want to miss out on another live stream. Enough of that nonsense, let's get back to the show. So I want to remove this line. I don't like this line. I think it's useless. So I'm just going to remove it. I'm going to re-export that. And I'm going to replace this with a version that doesn't have that bottom line. I'm going to do the exact same thing for this theme development stuff right here. Happy to help my friends. Always happy to answer questions. So let's go ahead and grab the yellow as well here. So paste that in, update. Let's grab the dark color now, right here. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing here. There we go. And we'll update this dark purple to be blue and I think that's it that looks good let's remove that stupid outline from the bottom that I hate on the ground we don't need the ground well, I guess we do need the ground. 
very well. You win this one. Somewhere in here, though, is that line. Mm, I just don't know where. Is there like a way that I can click on the line? Oh, oh. This is all the same nonsense. I'm like trying to zoom in to see the line, but I don't see the line. This editor, two stars out of 10. Glad that it's free. Very difficult to use by yourself. You heard that, Lottie? What is this? Outline two outlines? These are all invisible. But what in the world is visible? Everything here is invisible? You gotta be you gotta be kidding me. Is there stuff here that I just is not there? I don't understand. Okay, what is not in what in the world? It says everything is invisible. There's no way that everything is invisible, my friend. I am going to refresh this because this is straight shenanigans. I don't know why it's showing everything is invisible when things are very clearly visible. So I'm just going to refresh and we're going to pretend that Lottie just had a weird issue. See, like I turned this to invisible and then it not only does it not turn invisible, like it makes everything else broken after that. What in the world? This is a visible thing, but if I turn it invisible, it doesn't do anything. Is this like a corruption in the Lottie file? What is this? What is this nonsense? Okay. Let's try to turn this invisible. This is that border up top for the window. Turn that invisible and it disappears. Turn it visible. Okay, now that things are working, let's go to the ground and let's try to toggle that off. Okay, just screw me, right? We got it. I guess this one's just gonna have to have the ground. I'm very confused. Because everything else is fine until I try to disable the ground. And then when I disable the ground, it just breaks. I don't know what's up with that. No idea what's up with that. Mm. And I really don't want to open After Effects right now. Because that's going to be a huge pain. It's literally this, but there's just nothing I can do to delete the ground. All right, whatever. Let's update the colors. We'll leave it with the ground and let's move on because no point in fighting this if we're not going to win. All right. Let's get that yellow. And then we'll move on to the last set of illustrations. That's fine for me. Let's go ahead and export. Drag that into Adobe XD. the outline makes everything really weird
Because if we have the outline, I have to push everything off, which makes it look a little strange. Let's add the last one in and then we'll make some decisions here. So orange goes to yellow. And purple goes to dark blue. Update. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can remove this stupid outline. Oh my god, it's all grouped together. Oh no, it's not. Perfect. That's excellent. Export that. Drop that in. And let's see what we've got so far. I think we're going to have to move the images closer together. Because they're just really far off in my opinion. Yeah, I don't think the spacing is too bad. We need to like center things a little bit better. But yeah, some of these need to be a lot closer. Specifically, these two I think need to be a lot closer. Now, my question is, do we want to separate these out with like a line? Create some space in between these text areas? Or do we just want it to be gray? That's it. Let's center some of these things here that everything is properly spaced. All right, let's take a look. Do we want to include a large number? Something like this. I'm having trouble finding the center here. I guess we want it to actually be a slightly above you ever like do something in, in design and you're like oh maybe this will look cool and then you just hate it that just happened to me. Absolutely hate it. Hoping bringing them in closer will make things less terrible. But who knows. Because now it, it feels like there's a sequence because there's numbers, even though it's like, I just don't like the way that it looks, man. Could we do maybe a label? That's something like step one. And this is where we can start to use some of our accent color. The red. And group this padding 10 pixels. Five pixels. We'll do 10 on the sides to make it slightly longer. 
I got And then actually I call this research design. Coding. All this growth. I'm going to just pull these inside of these groupings so that we can once again just center them. Let's see. I also just really don't like this heading for some reason. Can't really put my finger on it though. All right, so how we can help website UX audit. This is research. Help me plan my website redesign. Design, help me design my website. Custom theme development, help me code my website. Conversion rate optimization. For coding, I don't want it to say coding, research, design, implementation. And instead of code, help me build my website and growth, help me up. How we can help one, two, three, four. How do we feel about the lines though? Are the lines good or are the lines bad? I have no idea. Sometimes, you know, you got to do things to see how it feels, how it looks. But it's okay to say it was a mistake. Just adjusting some things here. Let me take a look at this. I added even more lines and made them extend a little bit so that it's clear that we're kind of going through these sections. A part of me is like wondering if we should switch up the colors as well. And we can do that by just adding this background and then do let's say 50% on these so that every other one is just a little bit lighter. Experimentation is key for UI design, my friends. This is the point where, you know, you actually want to test out some of the things that you want to try before you spend too much time or effort building anything. This is your chance, so go crazy. Like. Does your website have these issues? How we can help? Get a website UX audit, website UX UI design. Oh. 
we lost a background here, but that's okay. We're back. Now every other one is a slightly different color. I just don't know how I feel about having them go have to scroll through. I might make it so that each of these research, design, implementation, and growth is like a tab. Click on it, it'll switch out the content. I think I might experiment and do something like that. But first, I'm going to go and take a super short five minute breaks. Uh, I want to thank you guys for hanging around so far. And I'm going to ask you guys to please, please, please don't go away. I will be right back. I a ramus, okay? If you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in just a couple of minutes, all right?
all right my friends hello i'm back hello 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 thanks so much for hanging in there as i went to go and grab some water i got this special bottle just for streams it is massive and it holds so much water let's go ahead and jump right back into things so let me take another look at this now that i had a second actually let's look at a website that i think can inspire the ui for this and i really like the notion website i think it has very similar illustrations and a very similar style okay not that we will look at it on a private browser then so here you can kind of see they have their own little custom illustrations and i really like how they have you know these little browsers that show off kind of their tool i do like how it's easy to read you can just kind of scroll down and get get what you need and what's inter interesting about this is it's all on white like there's not a bunch of color blocks the way that we have here it's just all on white and i'm kind of curious to see what that would look like now without these color blocks what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this we're going to get rid of this because this was just me testing yellow as the background. And again, we're st I still want to come back to this header and make it really nice. But we're going to save that for the end, I think. For this how we can help section, let's try getting rid of all these colors. And all these lines. And let's just see what the website looks like when it's like just all on white. Oh, we got top web partners back in the chat. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How are you? So this top part, how does it, does your website have these issues? I don't want this to say how we can help. I think that's what's really throwing me for a loop here. I want it to be somewhere along the lines of uh, us being able to help your website you know, grow and get more leads. We can help your website. What is the statement here? Hmm. How we can help. We turn slow, ugly, old websites into money-making machines. I have to hire a conversion copywriter to come help me out with some of these. Go ahead and just spread things out a little bit so everything can breathe. What if we added like a highlight, maybe back here, visual interest.
actually we're gonna go and say website strategy website design custom theme development and conversion rate optimization keep it simple easy for people to understand take a look at how this looks does your website have these issues? We turn slow, ugly, old websites into money-making machines. Research, website strategy. Not sure what needs to be fixed. We will audit your website, give you a solid plan to help guide you. Help me plan my website. Website design. Our team of marketing designers will design your new website with a focus on usability and conversion. Help me website, implementation, custom theme development. We'll transform your design into a fully interactive website coded from scratch with performance in mind. Help me build my website and then growth. Conversion rate optimization. Struggling to convert website visitors into customers, we can help design and test new pages and features. Help me out. Hmm. What do you guys think? Do you like the version with the gray backgrounds like this? and having everything separated? Or do we like this white version where everything just kind of flows downwards? I feel like this image, I don't know what it is about it. I feel like it needs to be like way bigger. We can't really, because then we're just taking up all of this extra space. I want to move this section down a little bit further. It feels like we're just too close to this. Oh, we can't do that because uh, this grows and we'll cover. Okay, we will reduce. I think I, looking at this, I do like the white version. I do want to see, because I'm curious, what it would look like if everything was aligned on the same side. So, take a super quick look at that. I just think this needs to be spaced more. It's already 160. Like this because you don't have to work too hard to see what's going on like strategy design development optimization get a free project estimate what do you guys think about this very inspired by that notion layout we just looked at but i think it it makes it easier to kind of go through one by one and understand what the services are without having to work too hard Let's see. I'm going to experiment with one more variation. Because this is a very important section for us, guys. Uh, right now, these are just going to lead to the same link. But eventually, I want them to go to a productized landing page. 
where they can go and purchase the product. Especially for the strategy stuff. So it's really important that we're able to sell well on this section. So what I want to know is what would happen if I just created a component that allowed us to kind of switch between research, design, implementation and growth. Just to save some space so that there's not so much vertical scrolling that users have to do. These are the four phases that we'll take them through. But every single one of our projects starts with strategy. Maybe if we added some descriptive text on the bottom, it would help transition them into using that. Maybe like a question would help them to kind of go and actually start interacting. And let's go ahead and prototype this up. I'll turn this into a component. And new state is going to be a design for the design state. Actually, let's go to the default state first. Now we're gonna just visually show that these are inactive by changing the the background opacity here. And we're probably going to bring this up a bit. So that's the default state. For design, this goes to 50% and the dark color, and then design would be 100% and red. So that they can see what's going on. And when we click on website design, then we switch out this content right here with this content. So do that, paste in updated content, delete the old one, paste in the updated image. And delete the old one. So let me just see that. I'm gonna go to design. We're gonna turn this into a component as well. And 
and then this component was going to have a couple different states it's going to have a hover state and the hover state is going to just be a blue background here it's going to have an active state and the active state is the red background that you see right now we're going to duplicate that because we're going to use it in just a second here go back to the default state and we're going to just replace all of these with the component. You're going to want to make sure that you change the text on each state until the day Adobe adds a freaking button that lets you do it in one click. We're going to have to remember to do it. So research next is design and design is going to be left in the default state. There we go. Next is implementation, which again is going to be left on the default state. Very cool. And finally growth. We'll delete this one that doesn't have components and we'll keep these. All right, so this is the default state design. We will toggle now the state here, the design. And we'll go to prototype. Go to the hover state and when someone clicks on this hovered version what we're gonna do oh uh, we can't do that in adobe xd yet oh that's so annoying that's okay but we have different artboards my friends we will use artboard so if someone clicks on this it's just gonna come over here and it's going to auto animate what we're going to do here is just change out this content or actually we're just going to change this to the design state or we already did that now we can revert this and we're going to do the same thing on the other end hover state auto animate here All right, let's take a look here. So we scroll down, we turn slow, ugly, old websites into money machines. What do you need help with? Research, not sure what needs to be fixed. We will audit your website, click design, and it changes, okay? So they can kind of self-select what, they, what they're interested in, as opposed to just scrolling down forever and ever and ever. Which I don't dislike this. Because it's very easy to consume. Which I like. But this one. Is going to save us I think a lot of space. So that we can focus on some of the other elements of the page. And allow them to kind of self select if they want design. Because for the most part. Most projects are going to start with me. Uh, with the strategy. You know that's why people kind of come to us. That's what we're known for. And now that I'm looking at this, we're going to have to come back in and add some UX optimizations that are just not a part of StoryBrand. You know, StoryBrand is great as a starting point, but there's definitely a few things that we want to do to make this better. Let me know if you'd like me to have a live stream on just what you can do to improve the StoryBrand website framework. Monty Morris says, I made $86 on Upwork freelancing WordPress. How do I 10 exit, um, charge more and solve bigger problems? You can 100 exit if you charge more and solve bigger problems. I guarantee it because I charge 100 times that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, you got to find people that actually need a really good website. 
right? That's why I like to work with companies that have a lot of traffic or pay for a lot of ads because they have a lot to lose if their website is bad. Those people are always going to be willing to pay a lot more than, you know, startup businesses that they just don't have the capital and they need whatever website put together. So definitely understanding um, who you want to target and making sure that you're getting in front of the right people with the right offer is very important. Otherwise, I would still be in the same boat freelancing WordPress and making, you know, pennies on the dollar. The reality is, is that you need, if you want to eat bigger fish, you need to go to a bigger lake. Hope that helps. Design. And also, Monty, Happy New Year, my friend. I think, I don't think we, we've, ta we've spoken this New Year. So Happy New Year. Same to everyone in the chat. Everybody that's joined me from a previous live stream and everybody that's new. Happy New Year. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are having a much better year this year. So for this one, development, the active state is implementation. And then the text needs to be updated. And we did this all in components, which is going to save us time when it comes time to actually prototype everything. Let's grab the new image, which is this one. Pull that in. Just delete the old one. And default state. Okay. So now we can come into this artboard and we can just set the state to development and everything that we did in the main component. It's transferred over to this new artboard. So we're going to do it one more time with growth. And then we'll prototype everything up. So one more state. This one's going to be called growth. And the default state, I'm going to rename. Oh, you can't rename it? All right, whatever. I don't need to. It's fine. Growth, active state. Change the text to the growth text or the conversion rate optimization text. And now the image changes to this one. Oh. So same deal here. You duplicate and update the state. Here we go. And because everything is done as a component, now we can prototype everything just through here and it should work just fine minus this research one but design that one's already done implementation that goes here and then growth that goes here the one thing that i wish you could do on adobe xd and it still drives me insane is i wish i can auto animate this to itself like this need if you click on this it auto animates to the same artboard but you can't do it so i have to actually come in here manually and i'm just so lazy i have to do it for each research one ate it oh look it works oh my god i didn't know that if you drag it it will actually go to the correct one no lies you have to actually do it manually. See? So annoying. One day, they're going to get to that. One day. Or I'm just going to jump off and start using Figma. Who knows? All right, let's bring up the buttons. Actually, let's bring up the whole page content. Most of which seem to have gotten cut off somewhere. See where that went. Oh, I see. It got cut off here. All right. Let's bring all this content up. We're about halfway through this page. And we're going to bring this stuff here as well. The 
duplicate these two sections, bring them over. Hey, man. Uh, Monty, I'm more than happy to do that. We'll have to wait until the end of the stream, though, my friend, okay? We also have a Patreon, if you guys are interested in, where you guys can ask me questions, get access to me in a private Slack group. And hopefully very soon, we'll be doing some members-only streams because quite frankly, YouTube is great, but there's a lot of content that I just can't show you. Um, I can't show you a lot of different kinds of websites that are for fringe niches that honestly, Monty, one of the ways that I make more money and I charge more to my clients is working in niches where you need to have a lot of specific kind of knowledge. So for example, I worked on a website for the, the gun niche recently. Um, and because it's in firearms, you have to do things a certain way, right? It's the same thing for um, uh, CBD or canisites. Um, anything that, you know, attorneys is another one. Anything that it requires a specific kind of website, you know, or specific requirements like um, accessibility requirements or, for example, uh, GDP GDPR requirements because of where they're located in the world or in the US. All of those are reasons you can charge more for a website in my experience. Okay, that's all done. Uh, a couple of these need to expand here. Like I got a little carried away with some of these footers. Okay, Monty and everybody in the chat, do me a favor. I want to hear your opinion right now. Please let me know what you prefer. Do you like the feature section to just be like this? You know, research, design, implementation, conversion rate optimization, just stacked one on top of the other? Or do you guys prefer uh, this format where you can see... Oh, man. This button is really far away. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Probably there. Or do you prefer this format? Sorry about that. But this format, you can see everything kind of in one view, right? This is all in one view. You don't have to scroll around. You just have to interact with this little thing. Obviously, there's going to be people that don't interact with this, and maybe they don't see all of our services. That is the danger of using one of these patterns as opposed to a longer stack pattern. So. But here you can see a prototyped. Oh, I guess let's finish this one. I thought we already did it. But I guess not. Oh, we did do it. That's weird. Oh, was it not transferred over here? I guess not. That's weird. Even though it's the master component. Oh, I see. I see. This one we did. we can go forward and backwards on this okay we should be able to click through it now so here's the view i don't know how i feel about it
Yeah, that's why we spent so long um, making sure that the images match the services as best as we could. Because we know it's going to take up a lot of attention. Let's go back to the stacked version. And we're going to update a little bit of copy here. Okay, so let's talk about the process. We turn slow, ugly, old websites into money-making machine. Mm, what do I want to say here? Let's let's talk. Let's figure that out first. What do I want to say here? Essentially, it's the pitch that we make to our clients when we jump on the phone. It's like we specialize in turning these websites into, you know, high converting, high traffic websites uh, because we follow this specific process. Um, it's a process that other people just really don't go through all the way. Most people are happy to slap a theme together and call it a day, but we will actually sit there and like, do the strategy, do the research, do the design, UX, UI, um, do the custom theme implementation and make sure that everything is built accordingly oh, or according to standards. Our websites are built. Following a, a proven process. For boosting versions and performance. Here's how we do it. Something like that, maybe. Again, conversion copywriter probably going to be needed here. That's okay. I just hired a copywriter today, so we might be able to push some of this stuff to her. Let's see. So we turn slow, ugly, old websites into money making machines. Our websites are built following a proven process for boosting conversions and performance. Here's how we do it. Research, design, implementation, and growth. I actually really like this because it, it feels, it feels more conversational. I don't know what it is, but I've been getting really into web copy that just is talking directly to me and it doesn't feel like too salesy or anything like that. Why am I all grayed out? Sorry, camera focus. Um, and yeah, this is just a really good, I think, lead in to, so that they understand, you know, more about how we can do this. Because if you guys are just joining, this very top part is the hero. We're still going to touch up a little bit the design on this, but the content, you know, uh, is more or less going to be this. Right here, this section is the successes section. And this is why people would buy a website from us versus others, right? To increase conversion rates and engagement, find higher quality leads and rank for high traffic keywords. Um, and this is the process that we take to get those results, right? So that's what we're diving into. It does make the page longer, but I think it's going to be easier to consume because it's so important that they understand everything that we do and everything that we offer. I'm very concerned that when people are reading things online, they're going very fast. And sometimes, you know, you might just say, oh, these guys do website strategy and that's it. You might not even read this part, right? You might just kind of scroll, read the headings. I know I read just headings sometimes, you know, like I'll scroll through a site and I'll read only the headings. This heading, this heading, this heading, this heading, this heading. 
you know and then with that i'll figure out if it's worth investing more time in reading a section because it has a relevant heading to me that's just kind of how how i use the web and there's a lot of research that shows that a lot of people use the web this way they 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 scan for context and when they find context for something that they're looking for they stop to read more if it's relevant so we want to kind of utilize that i think even though we spent all this time doing this we're going to move forward with this stacked version of the design so i'm going to move this over so that i know which version we're working and we're going to keep going now into this section which is the guide section or the social proof section so testimonial stuff like that that's over here move this up and we still haven't changed the colors or the not the colors but the typography that's okay i think we're going to do a live stream where i start to build out the brand style guide uh based on kind of this design and i want to kind of choose a new font i'm not really too happy with poppins it doesn't look much better than this the poppins font if we're being honest you know it's a little blockier but other than that it's just i don't know it's not that impactful and what we're doing is very premium design and development work and i want them to know that it's reflected in the design of our website and it's going to be reflected in the design of their website so that we can charge more money What do we do here? We can't use yellow because yellow is call to action. Uh, use blue. Blue is trust. your name my logos huh this will be fun what client logos to feature i want okay. i guess let's start collecting some client logos and see how we can display them uh so start with rocket ffl because we actually redesigned their brand we're gonna have to go into google drive where i have all of their logos saved from their branding project give me just one second as That's a mess. And shout out to my boy, David Verhano, who helped me with this logo. I really loved it. I think it came out really nice. I'm gonna go small for the, the sizing here. Let's see. Another one that we worked on, now we can just get into, into getting logos, is the Kindlepreneur website. We built that from the ground up. I 
wonder if I have any logo that's not white. Hmm. Pretty sure he cut out the whole Dave Chesson part. But I mean, this is the logo. Go into Photoshop, edit this on this. Uh, Monty wants to know, did I work with Notion? No, I did not work with Notion. Notion is not one of my clients. No, but if you're listening, Notion, I have space for you. Somehow I'm not able to change things because it's set to index. I'm going to change it to RGB. Unlock it. Background eraser tool. And erase the tolerance here. We can remove the with Dave Chesson part. And all I'm going to do here now is crop it. Oh, big pen. Import that in our project hello oh and i like using small logos cuz it's just not important. Some people might not even know who these guys are. So small logos, totally fine. Um, another website that we built, uh, Blueprint Training, we designed the brand for this as well. And I want to lead with the brands that I built for really well-known marketers because that's 99% of the clients that I service are just really hardcore digital marketers that want a really, really nice website that's also going to really help them compete in the, the SERPs. If you guys don't know what that is, search engine result pages. Uh, that's how uh, Google serves up traffic uh, or the pages that when you search something that you see. Most of my clients spend a lot of money and time ranking articles on Google. They want to make sure that whatever website they get is going to help them increase their rankings or at the very least maintain it. And a big part of that is the performance optimization work that we do. Um, this is another pretty hardcore uh, digital marketing company. I mean, these guys do content writing and we designed their entire content shop. I wish we would have done the implementation because it's just sloppy. No offense. I guess I'm not offending anybody because they got acquired. But this I want to include because we literally built this. Uh, they ran it for like six months then they got acquired. So, I mean, we did something right, I think. Rest Rider. We did another set of designs for this company. My SEO sucks, but I don't know if they still. Okay. Yeah, so we designed the the style for, for this company. They've been making updates since, which is good. I'm really glad. But 
We're going to include this as well because we did all of the visual brand direction here and a lot of these landing pages as well. I'm glad they got a better development company for this because the first time that I saw it, man, these guys were, were in rough shape. But now it's looking much better. Oof. They still didn't figure out the sticky sidebars that we designed, but that's okay. Yeah, we designed these massive pages for really long SEO guides. Let's go ahead and drop that in. Um. Oh, we have a new uh, a new client, which is not technically launched yet, but I'm gonna include their logo here anyways. This is complicated because I need to open something that you guys aren't really allowed. Okay, open. All right, I'm going to do this on my other screen, guys, really, really quickly. So that I can grab a logo for this company within the designs that we've been working on. Unfortunately, they're not approved, so I'm not able to show them to you. But I'm pretty sure I can use the company logo. Because we are designing their North American website. And we're going to be developing that on Shopify. I'm very, very excited for that project. This is a German luxury watchmaker that we closed recently. I'm gonna stack these guys now and we're gonna rearrange things so that visually it looks good one of the reasons i love uh adobe xd is the stacks feature does junghans not have a vertical logo like a horizontal logo instead of a vertical one so this vertical one is just not matching it's not vibing Oh, that's just their logo, and we can't really change their logo. This one potentially for here, Express Riders. Uh, we got Bro Trippin. Welcome back, my friend. Uh, he wants to know. What has been the best way for you in finding great clients? Or how do you find Jung Hans? Well, um, that is an isolated incident for sure. Uh, the way that I was able to close that company was I pitched them one year ago and I, they weren't ready to move forward. I gave them a lot of advice. Um, in terms of like what they should do and they never implemented it. Um, so the following year, my, a friend of mine actually got promoted to be their marketing manager and started the conversation again with me. Uh, but this time around, they were just sick of their current website and sick of the backend and Shopify 2.0 had just come out and I was able to show them how Shopify 2.0 and 
building a theme with custom sections is going to help them have a better website with higher conversions. And it's going to make managing the website for all of the employees that are involved much, much easier than it currently is. So I guess it was just kind of right place, right time. All of my other clients, all of these clients here that you see came in through referrals. So I'm going to give you my secret sauce. Are you guys ready? One, I do a lot of work in public. So people know that I do websites. I stream about websites. I tweet about websites. I post about websites. I write about websites. Everybody knows that I do websites, right? And the second thing is I have strategic relationships with agency owners. So I will go and I will, I have a lot of friends that run marketing agencies, design agencies, video agencies, SEO agencies, PPC agencies, all sorts of different kinds of agencies. Um, because I've been in this game for such a long time and I pay out commission anytime someone sends me a new project. So for example, I have a lot of these clients that they don't do websites, right? It's a pain for them to even manage website projects. So when a client that they are selling SEO services to needs a website redesign, they come and they contact me because they know that they're going to be able to not just give their client a website that is going to be technically sound enough to implement the marketing recommendations that they're making, but it's also going to be a website that is they're going to make money off, even though they don't have to do any of the work. All they need to do is send me the client. And if the client closes, uh, then they actually go and get some money. So that's how that works. Uh, this this dude here that owns the blueprint training, he referred to me Kindlepreneur. And then Kindlepreneur referred to me Rocket FFL. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, you just have to be in the game. People have to know who you are. You have to incentivize people who already have those leads and give them a reason to give them to you. Otherwise, you're going to have to always be fighting for leads, setting up either ads or setting up a way to acquire traffic. We've spent the last two years of my business running the entire website off a one page landing page like this and zero dollars in advertising. And the only way that we were able to do that is through strategic partnerships. Hopefully that answers your question, my friend. I forgot about Atticus, which we designed the entire website as well. So I'm gonna include this logo somewhere. Uh, and to answer your other question, you bro tripping, you cannot edit a client logo um, to make it fit what you want it to, to do. You need to be very careful not to mess with their logo to the point where it messes with their brand guidelines. So we're not going to change the logo in any way. We are only going to make them grayscale, essentially, but we're not going to actually edit our it's structured because that's going to be against their brand guidelines. Let me really quick find the Atticus logo in a few months. Um, I think I have to go to where my websites are because I have a local website version here. Well, actually, you know what I can do? we're working in adobe xd and that entire website was designed in adobe xd so i can just open that entire website there we go and i will just grab this logo give me that hello oh man is this crashing please don't crash please 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 don't crash Whew, I got worried there for a second, guys. Nothing good comes from a crash during a stream. Nothing good. Monty says, do you know how long I'll be streaming today? I don't know. I'm trying to get through this page, uh, but I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty hungry. So I'm going to try to get through what I can. And usually I wrap up by five. Just because that's like three or four hours. Started at one, stop at five, that's four hours. Usually people don't watch videos that are too, too long. So 
Gotta keep it reasonable. I'm gonna create two rows, I think, for some of these. Not everyone from Miami is Colombian, my friends. I am not. Bro tripping. Some yes, some companies do use different logos, but those logos and their usage would be documented inside their brand guidelines. So you do have to look at their brand guidelines for what you can and cannot do with their logo. Um, I have looked at their brand guidelines, and I am not allowed to skew or morph or otherwise alter their logo for my purposes without written permission first. And we're not gonna get that because we're our streaming but we're just not gonna edit their logo like that i feel like there's so many more clients that i have and i just can't remember the website is more Yes, it would make sense, but we would be altering their brand by doing that. You know what I mean? Like we're just not allowed to, this is considered a lockup and the way that it is structured, you're not allowed to touch it. You know, you're only allowed to use approved assets and that is the only approved brand asset that I have and the star. So that is the lockup that we must use, unfortunately. Let me see. What is another website that I designed this year? Let me just go to my clients. Oh, you know what? I did the design for Pareto PPC. This was the first project that I got after I got laid off uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic. So shout out to y'all for being so awesome. And being my first client when I lost my job. by this is the line that everyone always uses and I'm just not sure how I feel about it our clients oh I see my friend. See, it's hard when you're streaming, you know, to just understand what everybody's trying to say in the chat. It's like I got a million processes going at once. So I apologize. And thank you for clearing that up for me. These lockups are just driving me insane, though. Like this thing, I think what it is, um, is like we scan things based on like a vertical line from left to right in Western world. So like we're seeing everything aligned to this baseline. And here you can see the word Jung Hans is not properly aligned to that baseline, making it just look awful. So we gotta or like do the, the vertical alignment properly. You're in Colombia, man, lucky. I wish I was in Colombia right now. 
No, I am unfortunately from Cuba, a country where I cannot return because communism. All right. Our clients. Process to fast, beautiful. What do you think about this one? I'm kind of liking the feng shui now. I don't know if it's just like that I've given up or something. And I'm going to move some things. I'm going to move the button here. We're going to make this a different color because blue, blue. Oh, wait, this button is supposed to be yellow. OK, we're good. Spacing, spacing, spacing. Yeah, that was a good tip to move Zhang Hans over because on the side, it made it look like top heavy over to the side. But now it feels like, like, I don't know. And also just the way that we kind of like aligned everything so that the top text is like the chunky part, all is aligned, I think is important too. These little, little minor things that you wouldn't think you'd have to do, but they make a difference. And actually, even this, just bringing this up a little bit. Just a little bit. So that it's more in line with at least this text. All right, and let's see if we remove all the color. What do you guys think? Black and white or color? Black and white looks fancy. We can also try like some brand colors, make everything blue. Yeah, at least use like the brand gray, you know? Let's take a look at the color one again. Let me know what you guys think. A lot of blues, so it, it doesn't even feel like wrong to put all the colors. Is there like blue? But maybe like if we spaced them out more, it would look better. I don't know. We're just experimenting, my friends. Try 120. Your website is more than a blog. I feel like this actually should be in its own colored section now. Now, web design is so subjective. We're going to pretend that this one's going to be dark. 
because it's probably going to be dark. Our client, I, I kind of like this. I don't know. Yeah, I think I agree. Just the colors, leaving the brand colors kind of gives it a little bit of life and vibrancy, you know? I think this is fine. I, I still need to go back into my client list and probably refresh all the, like some of the logos and add some new ones in that I'm like forgetting about. Um, but I think this is fine, you know? Your website's more than a blog, get your free website review. And then again, some more social proof that pushes them into packages and pricing. We might change the location of this because it's like social proof, social proof. The way that I like to design is put social proof near actions that you want people to take. So for example, we want people to go ahead and click on these. You would be better off if you had a small testimonial for each of these services, right? talking about how great that service was and how much it helped their business. If you want to increase the clicks, social proof, right? And putting it near an action. The problem with this is that it's not near any important action. I mean, it's, it is sandwiched between these two right here, which is like just this button, but it might be better off if you move this section right under the packages and pricing. Cause this is another section where it's really important that we not scare people away. And when they see these prices, some people are going to get sticker shock and that's okay. We don't want the people that don't have budget to come and contact us anyways, but the people that come here, I want them to understand that, you know, there's a reason that everything costs so much. And if you look at any of these websites for more than 10 seconds, you'll understand that it's because they're fast, they work and they make a lot of money, <laughs> right? But we can always change the positioning for now. Let's go ahead and move on. Let me get a little bit of water here. I spilled everywhere. It's okay. And let's go ahead and get started with this section. Uh, starting with white text, yellow buttons. Get a free estimate. Oh. oh my God. Trying to go so fast that I keep messing up. Let's do get a free project estimate. Now for these. Do we do white text? Or do we do like cards? Like maybe this whole thing is like white. Kind of like the card concept better. Uh, we got a question in the chat says, are you building a one pager or eventually we'll add more pages to your website? Uh, this is technically a one pager, but there will be more pages down here in the navigation. Um, to give you an idea of what we're going to do is we are only going to be building out some uh, blog posts right now and linking to that down here. And then we're going to be linking to all of our landing pages for like freebies here um, until we build out the blog. Once we build out the blog, and that's going to be another live stream where we design the blog and we're going to talk about best practices for designing blogs and all that stuff. Um, eventually, then it will be added up here to the navigation. Hope that answers your question, my friend. I would like to see some like color coordination here. I'm going to experiment with like different colors. We have a uh, blue 
red and green. So I think we're going to do middle one was blue, left one is red. And the right one is green. So that visually you can see the difference between these packages. Go ahead and get all the text colors updated here. This background, white. This text, gonna need to come up here. Just sizing in it. Just a second. What are what size are we using up here? Twenty three. Leave it at twenty four then. I don't need these little boxes. I'll coordinate these pricings. Small, medium, large, just like McDonald's. Here's the first plan. Line these guys up so that they're all in the position. Grab the height of this, 217. Give that height to all these other guys. This one, so gray. And we'll drag over this little band. I'm wondering if these should be components now. So now that I'm like looking at this, it doesn't really look great if I just leave it like that, in my opinion. I mean, it's straightforward enough, but.
what if what if we did something a little bit different here and i can build this off off the page really quick pull that off what we're gonna do is reduce here What if we turn that into a component so when someone hovered we showed some Yeah, I'm gonna pull these off like I'm in. Take a look at this. We're experimenting. Update the hover states here and the prices as well. We no longer are able to do the packages here though, which is unfortunate. Just because of the sizing, but I might come up with a different thing here. We might use a pricing table or something like that. Hmm. Hover state. Design. The real test is, does the content fit in here? The answer is yes.
this one. Let's see what I think here. Hmm, I don't really like it. I don't think it's too strong. Also, wrong color here. I think we can do something much better here. Potentially like a pricing table or something like that. This is part of the process, guys. Iterating and figuring out how you want to display information is key. Look at a good pricing table. this content. For this, we're going to have to put some placeholder icons.
Here I'm just kind of emulating design to see if I can come up with a better way to kind of do things. And then I do like them showing what you get in each plan. I would like to also show them exactly what they're going to get at each level. Because the packages all build on each other. Hmm. I think, where do we use checklist right here? the font size is roughly this. Okay, so what do you get with the strategy? Get a website UX audit, and really, we should break that down to its parts. So, clear goals and APIs for the project this is the first thing that we offer that most other people don't. At least at the strategy part. <clears throat> A complete audit of your current. Technical performance. Uh, testing. Performance. Recommendations. Usability. Suggestion. We can also say we give 30 to 50 usability suggestions because that's what we do. Let's, see. Let's go through a UX audit, guys. Let's go through a UX audit and see what is included in there. This is the last UX audit that we completed for an agency called Creative Web Results. Unfortunately, uh, they have not come back to uh, do the full website. Looks like they did not have the full budget that we required, but competitive analysis, that's another one. Let's look at the competitive UX analysis. Thirty to fifty usability suggestions. What else? What else? What else? Then generate. Yeah, responsiveness testing, performance testing, accessibility testing. Clear goals. Complete UX. Usability suggestion. Then. Uh, 
a prioritized list of tasks to complete. We're just going to put these guys really quickly into a group and then into a stack so that I can freely move them around as I see fit. The question is, do we include a button on each one on each package? Or not? Let's see what this looks like. Sometimes I type in my Adobe XD just tells me to go kill myself. I don't know why. It's doing it again though. And I have to like click a bunch of weird stuff to make it work. See, a bunch of weird stuff, but they're all, all around. Hey, design, have us design wireframes, mockups, and interactions for your new website starting at 10,000. And it includes everything from our strategy package. Get red, but they don't. Doing that thing again. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Come on. Be good. I'm going to close out Photoshop. Good. Yes. All right. So design, what do you get? Um, layouts for each page as the wireframe layouts for each page template this template i fidelity mockups For each template. Clickable prototypes for any interactions. What else do they get? What are, uh, a website style guide for Consistency. What else do they get? Hmm. Let's think about this. When we design a website, we include the strategy, wireframes, mock-up. Oh, you know what, guys? This is the perfect opportunity. I've been writing a blog post. I still haven't gone through and formatted everything, but I went ahead and added it to uxhacks.com so that it can start getting picked up by Google. Um, it's not in the primary navigation or anything until we wrap it up, but if you come all the way to the bottom, there's a little link that says, read my latest post. 
and this is a post that dives into my entire process for redesigning a website in it i outline my entire website process from the very beginning to the very end and then some seo stuff to do after so first determine business objectives research competitive analysis analyze the current website document prioritize improvement sitemap and content planning this should be in the strategy portion I guess we'll do one more. Sitemap and content recommendations, I guess would be the other one. Okay, 327. So if they only buy design and they don't buy the development, then we also um, a folder with assets for your developers. What else do we give if we're just designing it and then handing it off? Oh, um, we can say oh um there's another document that we give anytime we hand off a design it is a um like a features a features document that explains all of the major features Again, we'll run this through a conversion copywriter to help me out, help me out but strategy design and development and then this makes sense now because we actually don't take on development projects that are just development projects we don't do it you either start with strategy and do st strategy design and development or you do strategy and do strategy and just design or you just do strategy but you can't come to me and say david we have designs please develop it for me i will just say no um, the reason being is that I can't, if we don't have a hand in the strategy, I can't make it a promise that when we build you the website, it's going to actually help conversions, in, right? If we don't have a hand in the strategy, I'm not going to just get designs from whatever the person designed it and implement it and pretend that we're going to be good to go. You know what I mean? Like we really need, um, I don't know. We really need some direction uh with the design stuff and i just i'm not confident in other designers ability to deliver some of the promises that we make to our our company or to our our clients we're also going to change pricing this is how you end up charging more you just increase pricing 1500 strategy 10000 design 12500 a total project would be minimum 25000 based on this which is that sounds good to me all right, so everything from strategy and design, and then we'll color coordinate so that they understand that they build on each other even visually. Uh, 
Design development. All right, so what else do you get? Assets for for developers to use. What do you get when you get development? Completely custom. Built. Theme. Clean code. Clean fast and maintainable. Fast and make full code version roll. Why am I lagging so hard right now? Version controlled. Version control and what else do they get? Clean fast and make code version control what else do we offer no sorry it's lag like between when i click something and when it comes out on my screen my friend not for you guys i'm sorry we got uh we got something here do i recommend any courses on wordpress theme development well that's a good question um i'm gonna be honest with you i have learned theme development uh through the school of hard knocks over the past 10 years uh, i don't I've never taken a course on it. Really can't tell you. The courses that I've seen, quite frankly, are uh, outdated. You know, uh, if you're gonna invest in a course, my friend, uh, you should wait because the uh, the new features that are coming out for full site editing are going to change the way that themes are built completely. In fact, um, I'm planning on doing a live stream just covering the new changes to full site stream or full site editing. Uh, and the new changes to WordPress 5.9. So definitely, if you see that on your, on your, um, what's it called? <laughs> on your YouTube feed, uh, definitely uh, tune in for that one. It's going to be very, very interesting. Um, if I find any good courses on it, I'll let you know. But honestly, it's getting to the point where I think that I, we're probably going to just package some of what we know about theme design and development and put that out into a little course for you guys. Version control and... A version controlled theme. We a completely custom built theme, clean, fast, and maintainable code. This is not really a benefit to them. Like they don't care about this. Passing Core Web Vital scores. What else do they get? Why would someone buy a custom theme? Oh, um, we do pixel. Perfect design to development. That's a big reason. Um, we do schema markup. For SEO, go back to this article. Let's go to developing the website.
No traffic. Us. That's kind of a big selling. All right, so front end development, back end development, content management systems. This kind of describes what each are. Content management system. We do do QA testing, but it's not really a benefit for them. Performance optimization. The SEO stuff isn't. I feel like this part is an article that I wrote in and of itself because it's so, so helpful. And I'll tell you guys the background story. Like I worked on a website without doing any SEO checks and it was a high traffic website. A month after or a couple weeks after I got a message from the owner and he said, dude, what you did really messed up my website. You know, I apologize and everything, but after that, I promised that I would never, ever, ever lose rankings for a website client ever again. And because of that, we developed this 10 step process that we follow every single time to make sure that we benchmark the SEO performance of a website. We crawl it for broken links and images, set up redirects, set up schema, like make sure all the content has been updated, test performance, uh, make sure there's an XML sitemap that we submit it, analytics tracking is set up. Um, the website is crawlable, has an SSL, has some sort of security plugin, and that it's following best practices according to Google. Um, yeah, that thing scarred me. I never want to have a client tell me that we ruined their website ever again. Uh, so. I think this is fine. Let's take a look at these packages. See how it looks. We got some more stuff in the chat here. I hear so much beef between WordPress and Webflow. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of beef because WordPress was the big boy in the market for a long time. And, you know, their whole thing was you don't really need to know how to code to use WordPress. Oh, yeah, well, um, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got it. Well, that was a lie. It was a lie. They lied. You do need to code to use WordPress. If not, you're going to struggle. Okay. That's just the reality of it. Like if you don't know how to code, it's going to be a liability because you have to set up domain. You have to set up hosting. You have to understand that you have to install a theme that has code and that has dependencies that are called plugins and that the theme and the plugins and the WordPress version need to be updated and you need a security plugin because there's a lot of hackers trying to get in on WordPress and injecting malware into your website. So if you don't understand all these technical bits and pieces, you're going to have a hard time on WordPress, you know? So I don't recommend it for non-technical people or people that don't have either the experience or the team that's going to be able to help them. If you're a non-technical founder and you just need a website put together and you don't want to worry about coding and you don't want to worry about, you know, having developers on staff or security issues or anything like that, I think Webflow is a great solution because it's managed. It's a managed platform, just like Shopify. Shopify doesn't have very many security vulnerabilities because it's managed by the Shopify platform. Any security vulnerabilities that happen on their servers happen on all of their servers and they can go and they can kind of tell when something is up, like up and they can go and they can fix it. But on WordPress, it's like it's open source. So while you can go and update your package, your WordPress package or your plugin or your theme, ultimately it's not managed hosting. Even if you use a managed hosting company, it's not like WordPress is giving you the host. The, the hosting company is the one that's providing the host. And because of that, you're going to end up, in my opinion, having having to deal with all of the technical issues that WordPress is going to come along with. It, there are a lot of great things that you can do on WordPress that you just cannot do on Webflow. So if you're like really hardcore into 
marketing, then web Webflow is not going to be as flexible for you because there's a lot of things that you're going to be limited to um, unless you get a really, really good JavaScript developer. And at that point, you're back in the development. So yeah, Webflow, a lot of beef between the WordPress people, but ultimately it's breaking down to you either know how to code or you're comfortable with code, or you're comfortable with WordPress and you're going to stay in the ecosystem because you know that what's coming is going to make WordPress even better than Webflow. Or you're saying, I don't want to deal with all this stuff. I just want a website. I just want it to work. And I don't want to learn how to code. Instead, I want to use a, a little visual editor that does everything for me. Then, you know, go ahead and use Webflow. If you ask me what's better, an Elementor website or a Webflow website, I would say just go with Webflow. If you're going to use a bloated page builder like Divi or Elementor or Beaver Builder, you're better off just doing Webflow. Don't do a bloated page builder. It's going to give you terrible scores. It's going to cause you a lot more issues in the long run than either building a custom theme the way that I like to do um, so that you're only loading up scripts, CSS code and dependencies that you actually need. Um, or just go with like a managed solution like Webflow. All right, let's get back into it. Rant over. Brandon says, loving the channel, man. Thank you, my friend. We out here. We trying, you know. I appreciate you guys hanging out because if not, I got to design and be all alone, which is no fun for me. We got another person in the chat says loving the content and that they're learning Shopify development. Well, I hope that you make a ton of money as a Shopify developer. I know that there's so much opportunity out there if you just learn a little bit of Shopify development. So here's to you, man. Cheers. All right. So here are packages, strategy, design and development. And it tells you exactly what you're going to get. And there's only one call to action for a project estimate. We got to update the text though. The hover text. And I think this is where I'm going to have to call it, my friends. Because I'm pretty hungry. I think I got to go get something. But I think what we'll do, because I didn't get to finish and we're so close. There's only a couple sections. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to do another live stream, a part two to this video. Uh, tomorrow probably around 1 p.m and we're just gonna finish this the site we're gonna knock out what's left uh and then yeah i'm gonna push this off to one of our designers internally who will go ahead and uh stack everything up on mobile for me uh, and then push this off to an illustrator that's gonna work on some of these icons uh that are going to be specifically for uh this website that we're designing and i think we're gonna go uh more in that pixel pixel route i don't know if you guys like the pixel art that i've started using on my profile pictures and stuff like this one here for example but i think we're gonna have the same artist which is a buddy of mine go and actually create some icons for the different packages so for strategy i'm thinking like a map would be cool because it's like the plan that's gonna get you from point a to point b uh, the design would be, if we're thinking like RPG adventure, the, the design might be like, uh, a shield and then the development might be the sword because ultimately you can't kill anything with a shield and you really can't make any money just with a design for a while. You need a sword, you need to be able to do something with it, which is why the sword I think would be cool for development. But yeah, tomorrow we'll finish this how it works section. We'll do this why work with us section and then this free guide and the footer. And then we'll be done. Let's take a look at what we've made so far today. And let me actually, I'm thinking of changing this little part to yellow. I hate it. <laughs> That's half of what I do in design. I just try something and then I, uh, I also want tomorrow to look at this header, this hero section, and I want to make it more creative because this is the first impressions that people are going to get when they land on the website. And I really want to just wow them. So I have a, a version that I created a while back over on my Instagram. Let me go to Instagram slash UX hacks. If you are on Instagram, do me a favor and give me a follow. I don't post very often there, but I always reply to questions. 
on Twitter and on but if we scroll down here I've got this mock-up or like a version that I worked on a while ago and you see how we've got like these squares of like different colors I think visually it's very interesting so I kind of want to do something that plays off of all of the different brand colors that we have um, this is from 2022 so this is from two years ago and I really want to just challenge myself to make this website look a little bit nicer um, than where it's at right now but let's just go through it and let's go through each of the sections we've got this navigation part two actions primary action is to review your website secondary action is to download your checklist um, this is probably going to have to be all caps as well because it's in the navigation so download website checklist and then review my website your website but better and then turn more clicks into dollars with a website optimized for conversions and performance get my free website review or you can click on this video to get started and it'll kind of push them through a sequence using video ask where they can self-identify as needing strategy needing design or needing development uh, so that we can give them more context and then hopefully get them to jump on a call with us where we can give them either a free website ux review or an estimate for their project based on what they are interested in. after that we've got this section down here which is our success sections and this is us spelling out to them what success looks like so our websites help businesses increase conversion rates and engagement find higher quality leads and rank for high traffic keywords does your website have low conversion rates or too many unqualified leads why is this not why are you not animating i specifically requested it there we go does your website have low conversion rates or too many unqualified leads, high bounce rates and exit rates or low engagement, slow load times and performance penalties from Google? Have an expert take a look, right? And that's again, just getting them to jump on that call. After that, we turn slow, ugly, old websites into money-making machines. Our websites are built following a proven process for boosting conversions and performance. Here's how we do it research website strategy where we go ahead and give you a plan website design where we actually go and design the website for you and let me know what you guys think of these animations from uh lottie and from icon scout i think they fit in pretty well and given the fact that we were able to find them or come up with the idea of find them edit them and add them to our ui design on the stream i think makes it kind of more approachable for you guys that are watching that maybe aren't illustrators because i'm not an illustrator but I, I can try and i can come up with some icons if i have some time uh, but ultimately this is a way that you can get nice high quality animated illustrations on your website for what did i end up paying like 12 dollars a month that's not that bad so let me know what you think of these animations so custom theme development where we build your website and then conversion rate optimization where we optimize your website for conversions and then everything is pushing them towards getting a free project estimate next your website is more than a blog i've spent the last 10 years working with business owners to transform their websites from a single blog to a conversion optimized where we already said money make a machine so we're going to say conversion optimized online business and of course I can help you do the same. Oh, went too fast there. And then here's a relevant testimonial. David doesn't just make website. He tells a story of your company and in an effective way through design and functionality, bringing your vision to light. The end result was a website that not only looks amazing, but is effective. Suzanne Monroe, owner, CEO, IAWP wellness coach. Their logo I didn't add because I didn't develop their website. Um, and I, I don't really like the developers that they use too much, but we did design it. Get my free website review. You're in good company. Our clients trust us to build them a fast, beautiful, and high converting website. 
then all the logos, packages and pricing. We've got strategy, get a detailed roadmap for your website and a list of what needs to change. Starting at 2,500, this is what you get. Clear your goals and KPIs for the project, a complete audit of your current site, a competitive UX analysis, 30 to 50 usability suggestions, sitemap and content recommendations, performance recommendations, and a prioritized list of tasks to complete. Then we've got the design package where we will design wireframes, mockups, and interactions for your new website. Everything from our strategy package is included. We include wireframe layouts for each template, high fidelity mockups for each template, and clickable prototypes for any interactions, a website style guide for consistency, assets for your developers to use, and documentation for any major features. And then finally, we have our development pack, which, oh, I forgot to change the text for. <laughs> this is why we proofread it. This is why I always end the streams proofreading my friends. This lag is legit. This thing just keeps freezing on me. There we go. Okay. okay um, get a fully fun. Let's zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking. I forgot you guys are here. Somewhere. Get a fully functional website. from strategy to design and implementation. From strategy to launch and everything in between. I feel like we use this copy somewhere else, but that's okay. Again, Gotta have my copywriter come through and just look at everything. Starting at this, everything from, it includes everything from strategy. Let's go back down here. So development, get a fully functional website from strategy. Oh, let get a fully functional website optimized for conversions and Speed, accessibility, and SEO. Okay, very clear what we offer now. Let's go back to our view. So development, get a fully functional website, optimized for conversions, speed, accessibility, and SEO. That is the big thing that I want them to understand, even if they don't read any other part about the package, this is what they're getting. They're getting the fully functional website, right? It includes everything from strategy and design, starting at 12,500, a completely custom built theme, pixel perfect design to development, clean, fast, and maintainable code, uh, a passing core web vital scores. So, okay. You gotta stop messing with me, Adobe XD. I'm serious. I'm getting very upset right now. Oh, 90 plus or web vital scores. Cause that's really what we do. Any website we put out is guaranteed 90 plus on the core web vital scores. Um, we do our best to work with clients. Sometimes they have third party scripts that are really gonna slow things down. But if we're able to build the theme from end to end, we're able to kind of plan things out properly and get those scores really, really high. Which again, it's our unique selling proposition. Put it here. So 90 plus core web vital scores, schema markup for SEO and no traffic loss due to redesign. due to your redesign. And then again, the call to action here is get a free project estimate. So what I want you guys to notice, this is really important, is I'm trying to make it as straightforward as possible for people on this website to know exactly what to expect from working with me. There should be no questions in their minds 
when they jump on the call of how much is it going to cost? What does it include? Like, what even do you do? How do you, how can you help me? I want the website to qualify my leads, right? That's what it's here for. Think of your website as a salesperson that is working for you 24 seven, 365 days a year. It is constantly selling for you, right? But we need to do our part and we need to set it up so that it answers questions and objections that our prospects are gonna have before they come and waste our time with whatever their problems are. So being very straightforward about what do your packages include? You know, what do you do and what are your services and like what are the benefits that you know you we can expect from working with you? It's all spelled out here in the website. And that's why I think story brand as a framework is really, really good for people who are just getting started and building websites and actually designing them so that they make sense, so that they tell a logical story. Because now tomorrow we're gonna sit down and do the how it works, the why work with us. And this entire web page is going to just serve as something that I can send to prospects. And right away, they're gonna know exactly how they could work with me, how much it's gonna cost, and what they need to do next, right? So it's a really, really good sales tool if we set it up the right way, which again, that story brand framework, it really helped me even as someone who's been building websites for a long time to have a starting point where I can just kind of lay out this basic information in this basic layout and then we can work on improving it and making it better as opposed to starting from scratch, which can be very, very difficult. Again, it's not gonna work for every single kind of website, the story brand stuff, um, but you can get it to work for most types of businesses, big or small, uh, which I think is really good. All right, so I think that's it. We got some more comments. We got, it says nice CTAs and credibility. It's not overwhelming, thank you. That's definitely the goal. We wanna be straightforward and succinct, but we also want to give them enough information where we're credible and we're an authority on building websites, right? Um, and then having prices on the website also weeds out certain leads. Yes, they do. I've had calls, you know, some leads will be like, oh yeah, that's the pricing, cool, cool. And other leads will be like, oh, no thank you. And they'll just hang up on me. <laughs> I had that happen to me uh, not too long ago. They were like, oh, I got your, I got your information off uh, Google and I just kind of wanted to you know, see if we could work together on a website. And I let him talk for five minutes about what he needed. And I said, okay, my price starts at $10,000. And he was like, oh no, I just need this. And I'm like, okay, well, that's our starting price for any project. They're like, okay, no thanks. They hung up real quick, but that's good because I spent six minutes on the call for something that could have spent 30 minutes on a call and I would have made zero dollars from. So I'd rather get it done faster and pre-screen my leads so that I can get back to serving the clients that actually have the budget to pay me instead of worrying about these leads or what we would call in the industry as uh, tire kickers, right? They're, they're the people at the dealership that are kicking the tires to see like what this is all about and what the pricing is like and ask a bunch of questions. But ultimately, they're just here to waste your time. We want our website to sell for us. We don't want to spend all of our time selling one to one which is exactly why I want to implement this video ask and have these pre-recorded videos so that I can scale my sales effort. And instead I can have these one-to-one -one conversations with clients, but I don't actually have to be there myself doing it all the time. All right, my friends. Well, that's it for me. Before you guys go, I'm just going to remind, remind you as I do every stream that we are going to go live every single Friday this year at 1 PM Eastern time. So if you want to learn more, <laughs> That transition was weird. But if you want to learn more about design and development, uh, building websites, scaling websites, and everything in between, uh, do me a favor, go ahead and like this video, <laughs> subscribe if you haven't, and hit that bell notification. If you want to be alerted to our next live stream, which will be happening tomorrow, but also again next Friday. Until then, my friends, my name is David, where and this is UX Hacks, where it's my goal to help you make more money from your website. All right, my friends, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.